Well, hello and welcome to this English lesson where we're going to talk about the earth. We're going to talk about earth. Notice I used a the and then I didn't use a the. You'll understand why in a moment. Um but this is the fourth in a series of lessons. We did a lesson on air. We did a lesson on water. We did a lesson on fire. Now, we're doing a lesson on the earth. So, I think this will be a fun lesson. Um I don't know if you realize that when I do um the research to make the slides, it's actually fun for me to do that. I think one of the reasons that I became a teacher uh is because I actually enjoy uh learning new things and putting lessons together and then teaching people like you. So, welcome to this English lesson where we're going to talk about the earth. So, earth. You'll notice that I have two slides here. I have earth and then I have a picture of someone putting a plant in dirt or soil. So, we refer to the ground as the earth, okay? So, there is earth all around my house. The lawn grows in the earth that is on my property but we also use the word earth to talk about the planet earth. So, just a slightly different meaning for the word. Again, you can talk about earth as basically all of the dirt that you see outside all of the soil but you can also use the word earth to refer to the planet that we all live on. Um so, hopefully, you understand that distinction. We live on earth but there is a lot of earth around my house, okay? So, that's the slight difference. When I talk about earth in the sense of dirt, I mean stuff that looks like this. Dirt is usually brown. Dirt is found in every single country in the world. Dirt is simply what you will find if you look underneath the plants that are growing outside and in some areas, you can just see the dirt. There is a field across the road from me and yesterday, the farmer was in that field and so, it's just a big field of dirt right now. At some point, he will plant something there. So, I'm not sure if you know what this person is doing but they're riding a dirt bike. So, when you have dirt, you can buy a type of motorcycle that's called a dirt bike uh and you can use that uh to uh drive around in the dirt and uh you get a little bit of dirt on you when you do it but I'm sure it's quite fun. So, what is the difference between dirt and soil? So, soil is the kind of dirt that you use when you want to grow things, okay? So, if you go to a farm, you could say the field is full of dirt. It's a big field of dirt but you would probably more accurately say soil, okay? So, I said the farmer worked up the dirt. The farmer has the field across from me ready to plant. It would probably be more accurate to say the soil is ready to be planted. Soil is the type of dirt that's really good for growing plants in. It's the type of earth that is just it's just really has a lot of nutrients. It has everything you need for plants to grow. So, soil is simply dirt that's really good for growing stuff. We have a lot of soil on our farm as well. So, the very top layer is called topsoil. You'll notice in this picture that the dirt close to the surface, the soil close to the surface has a darker color to it. That usually means that the soil is very rich in nutrients. You'll notice that when you go lower, this is actually called subsoil but that's a different slide. The soil is a slightly different color but everywhere you go in the world where they grow crops in fields, they'll talk about how much topsoil they have. There are parts of Canada where there is lots of topsoil. And there are parts of Canada where there isn't very much topsoil. The more topsoil you have, the better your crops will grow. Um my farm has an average amount of topsoil. Um we also use the word land to almost always refer to any piece of property that doesn't have buildings on it. Let me explain. Around a town, there will be fields. And we will simply refer to it as land. And sometimes people will say, I'm going to buy a piece of land and build a house. I'm going to buy some land and build a house. And what they mean by that is they're going to buy what you could call a field but it can refer to any 
piece of property that has no buildings on it, okay? Um so anyways, uh we live on a very large piece of land. So, when you talk about a farm, you can also use the word land. We sometimes call it farmland as well but land is a word we use uh, to refer to any place where there's no buildings um and there's usually something growing there depending on where you live. If you can grow crops on a certain piece of land, we say it is arable. So, the amount of arable land in the world is finite. That means there's only a certain amount of it. So, it's very important that every country takes care of their arable land. You need to take care of the soil, the land, the fields where you can grow stuff. So, if you say some uh if you say, oh, I have a piece of land for sale and someone says and it's arable land, that means that you can grow crops on it. There's a couple kinds of soil. I hope by the way, I hope this lesson isn't too boring. I found it fascinating but it is a very uh a fairly specific topic. So, hopefully you enjoy it. Um I know I always enjoy teaching them but let's keep going. There are a couple different kinds of soil. Actually, more than two but I'm simply going to talk about clay and sand. Clay is actually a very, very fine soil. I know it might seem like sand is very fine but clay is actually a very, very fine soil and it can get muddy very easily and it can hold lots of water when it gets wet. The soil on my farm is mostly clay. Another type of soil is a sandy soil or sand itself. Sand doesn't hold water very well. In fact, water goes through sand very, very quickly. So, a couple of different kinds of soil, clay soil and sandy soil. I didn't add the why there but you can, I think you understand what I mean. And then I mentioned this earlier. This is the top soil <laughs> and if you go down far enough, you have what's called the subsoil. The top soil is good for growing stuff. I think I'm covering up my mic. The subsoil is not great for growing stuff. And then if you go deep enough, you get to what's called bedrock. So, in Canada, we have bedrock at a certain depth. If you dig far enough into the ground or if you drill far enough, you will hit bedrock. When they build large apartment buildings, they usually drill down so that they can hit bedrock so that the building has a solid foundation. Uh where I live, they often drill down to bedrock because there's water and natural gas available down there. So, bedrock is if you go down far enough that you hit rock. If you've ever played the game Minecraft, I think if you dig far enough down, you hit bedrock. Todd and Dave can uh confirm that for me. I haven't played Minecraft for a long time. Um let me see here where I'm at. Yeah, let's do two more and we'll do some questions. We can also buy soil. So, if you need some earth to plant something in, you can go to the hardware store or almost any store at this time of year and buy a bag of soil and that is a special kind of soil that you use to grow things in pots. So, if you had some pots and you wanted to plant something and you know that things grow in good earth, you would go and buy some potting soil and put it in the potting soil in a pot. And then of course, when any time it rains, the earth gets muddy. When dirt or soil gets a lot of water added to it, when it rains or when even if you let your garden hose run by accident, you end up getting a lot of mud. Mud is simply dirt or soil or earth that has gotten very, very, very wet. So, again, this is not a scientific lesson. So, please don't uh, get annoyed if I'm wrong but to me, the crust of the earth is the very thin top layer of rock and a little bit of soil, okay? So, the earth has several layers. The top layer that we all live on is called the crust of the earth or the earth's crust. When you have bread, the outside of the slice of bread or the outside of the loaf of bread is called the crust. The earth also has a crust and it's the topmost thinnest layer. Let me make this slide bigger so you can see. 
the crust of the earth. So, the top layer of rock and that little bit of dirt we would call the crust. Underneath the crust you have what's called the mantle. So, the mantle is the part of the earth between the crust and the core which is actually my next slide. So, the core of the earth is the hot center of the earth. So, there's probably more layers than those three, okay? But for the uh, simplicity of this lesson, we have the crust of the earth or the earth's crust, the mantle of the earth or the earth's mantle which is below the crust but above the core and then we have the earth's core or the core of the earth which is the hot center of our planet. I'm going to talk a little bit about earth moving equipment. So, earth moving equipment is the type of equipment that they use to move the earth around before they build things. So, you have all kinds of different equipment that humans have invented to move the earth and it's called earth moving equipment or you might just call them earth movers. So, we have what's called a grater. A grater is a machine that they use. It has a big blade in the center and they use this to kind of smooth out the dirt when they make um a place when there's a place where they're going to put up a parking lot they will often have a grater come in and it will make the it will move all of the earth that it needs to in order to make things perfectly smooth so that they can build a parking lot sometimes we even see graters we have dirt roads where i live and in the summer um late spring early summer a grater will come to level out the dirt road again because sometimes there's lots of potholes and puddles. We have a machine called a bulldozer. A bulldozer is a tracked vehicle. Instead of wheels, it has tracks and it is a type of earth mover that's used to push dirt around. So, it has a big blade on the front. A bulldozer is a very powerful machine that is used to move dirt simply by pushing it. Um and I think because it has tracks, it can push really, really hard because tires would spin really easily but the tracks have better grip. Hey, Thamizini, thank you so much for becoming a member of the channel. That is very awesome of you. Thank you very much for that. Um if you have watched any of my GeoGuessr live streams which I do on my other YouTube channel, we almost always see an excavator somewhere. So, an excavator is a machine with a big arm and bucket that can dig in the dirt. It can dig in the earth to make really deep holes. Um usually when they um are planning to build a house in Canada, an excavator will come uh and will dig a hole with its big arm and big bucket. But yes, when we play GeoGuessr, I think almost every time I've played, I've seen an excavator and taught that vocabulary word. So, this will be review for you. Um I see Garav in the chat saying heavy machinery. We also call this heavy machinery. Thank you for that reminder, okay? Um and then Modag saying excavators here as well. <laughs> yes, they're everywhere. <laughs> I think excavators, it's just a sign of the amount of construction in the world. We are constantly building things. Um and we also have a type of uh earth mover or heavy machinery called a backhoe. Uh, a backhoe is called a backhoe because on the back, it has an arm and a bucket for digging. Um so, the, a hoe in English is a tool you use in the garden and this looks a little bit like uh, that tool. Uh and then lastly, we have what's called a dump truck. So, a dump truck can be filled with dirt. You know, as they're digging a hole in the earth, they can put the dirt into a dump truck. And then the truck can actually dump. The reason it's called a dump truck is because the back can go up and we say that it is dumping. So, it will go and dump its load somewhere. So, to review some of the more common earth moving equipment, a grader for leveling things, a bulldozer for pushing dirt and earth around, an excavator for digging holes, a backhoe for doing both. It's kind of um like a Swiss army knife of earth moving machines. It has a loader on the front and a um a, a digger on the back. And then we have a dump truck for moving 
dirt and earth and stones and gravel and everything around. Um these were some of my favorite vehicles as a child. I would always like seeing them go by on the road. I think a lot of kids like um dump trucks and uh excavators and the, all those kinds of things. <laughs> Brent says, I'd love to do an English lesson from a moving dump truck. That would certainly be a lot of fun. Hey, so we mentioned earthworms earlier. Hey, art game, thank you so much for the super sticker. That is very awesome of you. Thank you. Um earthworms. So, one of the reasons why from that big list that Natalia gave of all the things that live in the soil, one of the reasons I said earthworms were my favorite is because earthworms are a sign that the soil is really really healthy. It's a sign that the soil is a good place to grow things. So, Jen and I grow flowers as many of you know. When we work up the soil, when we work up the earth, we're always happy to see earthworms because it means that the soil has lots of nutrients in it. It has everything you need for plants to grow well. So, earthworms are my favorite thing to see in the soil. Um we had a question about Earth Day. Earth Day takes place on April 22nd every year. Uh and it is a day where we celebrate the earth. It's a day where people who um yeah, I would say you might call them earth keepers. Um that's a rare term but someone who really wants to keep the planet healthy um would celebrate Earth Day. Most places in the world whether you are an environmentalist or not, whether you're someone who wants to make the earth better or not, are usually, people are usually aware of Earth Day, a day when we celebrate the planet. So, sometimes the earth shakes and we call it an earthquake. Where I live in Ontario, Canada, we have minor earthquakes very rarely. So, we have an earthquake every seven to ten years and it's very, very minor. On the Richter scale, which is how they measure an earthquake, we're like the lowest possible. The last earthquake we had lasted about two seconds and it just felt a little strange. But in some places in the world, they have major earthquakes. Uh earthquakes that are really high on the Richter scale and they cause damage to buildings and they actually can cause people to become injured or to lose their life. So, earthquakes are very very serious thing in some parts of the world and of great concern. Um luckily as humans get smarter, we build buildings that are better at withstanding earthquakes. We build buildings that are safer during an earthquake. So, I think as time goes by, most of the world will become much safer but even still now, earthquakes are very devastating would be the best English word to use. So, we had the word earthy uh come up in a question. When you say something is earthy, when you describe it as earthy, it has the colors of the earth like the colors of dirt, the colors like and or it smells a little bit like it, okay? So, there are um times when well, dirt itself smells earthy, okay? If you go outside right now and dig a hole with a shovel and smell the dirt, we would say it has an earthy smell. You can also describe a person as being very earthy. Um usually an earthy person uh dresses in clothes that are very simple and straightforward. They don't dress in a lot of bright colors um and uh you would say they are an earthy. I think the best example would be um back in the 70s, there were people in North America called hippies and they were very earthy people. I think that's probably the right way to describe them. But more we would use it to describe uh colors or tones or smells. So, you could say um oh, I painted my uh my room. I painted my office and I used a lot of earthy tones. I used a lot of earthy colors. So, those would be like colors in the far picture kind of that subtle look. Earthenware. So, when you make things out of clay primarily, usually the type of soil called clay, there are specific kinds of clay that are really good for making pots out of and we say they're they are earthenware pots. Basically, meaning that they're made out of earth. That someone went and they dug up some clay 
and they use that clay to make pots out of. So, here you see some earthenware. We have many earthenware pots around the farm. We also call them clay pots. It's a little easier to say clay pot um but definitely. Um I don't usually answer questions from the chat but I see the question. Hi, Bob. Do you have any dandelions in Canada? We have lots of dandelions in Russia especially so far. Yes, we do. <laughs> a lot of in French, is it don de lion or do you guys say pisson lit? I think one is a crude way of saying dandelion. I'm not sure but anyways, I'm sure if you saw my field right now, you would laugh at the amount of dandelions. People who who are from the planet earth can be called earthlings, okay? You could say that we are citizens of the planet earth. You could say that we are from the planet earth. When you watch science fiction movies, people from earth are often called earthlings. So, this here is an earthling. Someone who is from the earth. Um so, definitely we have a name for ourselves. We are all earthlings. So, sometimes you'll see an alien in a science fiction movie say earthling take me to your leader or something like that. Uh Moise in the chat says, hi, Bob. Do you use fertilizer to grow flowers? Uh Moise, we use the manure from our sheep and goats. So, we compost our manure and we use that to fertilize our fields. Um and Lolly says, yes, Don de Lyon is pisanly. Let's talk a little bit about continents. I should mention that I did do a lesson on the earth a two years ago and so, the next three slides I think are a bit of a repeat but the continents are the large land masses that we have divided the planet into and they are the uh parts of the earth like North America, South America. Last time I talked about continents, there was an argument about how many there are but my understanding is that there are seven but I think in some countries, you learn that there are six or eight So, we should see in the chat in the comments below if people comment on that but my understanding is that we have uh the seven continents that you see there. They are the large land masses that make up the planet earth. We also have the northern hemisphere. The northern hemisphere is everything above the equator. The equator being the line, the imaginary line that divides the earth in half to north and south. So, we have the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere. I'm sure you guessed that was coming next. So, I live in the northern hemisphere. Some of you live in the southern hemisphere. In the northern hemisphere right now, we're heading into summer. In the southern hemisphere, it's definitely getting colder. So funny, eh? It's getting warmer up here but it's getting colder down there. We also have like I mentioned the thin line that goes around the earth called the equator. We also have the tropic of Capricorn and the tropic of Cancer which are when the earth tilts, they're the lines that were this don't quote. This is not a science lesson. I'm not talking about the tropic of Cancer or the tropic of Capricorn but uh definitely the equator is the imaginary line that is the exact center. Um, between the north uh the northern and southern hemispheres. If you want a science lesson, I'm sure there's other YouTube channels that will teach you more about the equator and the tropic of Cancer and the tropic of Capricorn. Um at the very top of our planet, at the very top of the earth is the north pole. At the very bottom of the earth is the south pole. The south pole being in Antarctica. Uh and the North Pole, I think being just in the the middle of a huge ice flow although I should research that. Again, this is not a science lesson. It's just an English lesson. Um we also have this very curious invisible thing around the planet called the Earth's magnetic field. The Earth's magnetic field is what allows us to navigate using a compass. A compass always points to the north magnetic pole which is slightly off from the north pole but close enough that it allows you to find out where north is. So, a compass is a small round device with a magnetic needle in it and it will point to the magnetic north because the earth has a strong magnetic field. Um I don't think we fully understand the earth's magnetic field but it is very, very important to many, many things. Um the earth rotates. 
the earth rotates on its axis. Notice I changed the slide. So, the earth rotates at a certain speed. When the earth turns one full revolution, when the earth rotates one full revolution, we call it a day. So, the earth is spinning very, very quickly and it's spinning on its axis. It's rotating on its axis. Notice I'm using different words here that mean the same thing. And one full rotation of the earth equals one day. 24 hours. It's pretty cool. Um and yes, it spins on its axis. Now, interestingly enough, the axis is the center of the earth. The center of the earth from the north to the south. But the earth actually tilts on its axis back and forth. So, sometimes Canada is closer to the sun for a few months and that's when we have summer and our days are longer and sometimes the earth is farther from the sun for a few months and that's when our days are shorter and we have winter. So, that is the the tilt of the earth. Um let me just check one thing here. Sorry for the little pause. So, earth has seasons because its axis is tilted. Earth's axis is always pointed in the same direction. So, different parts of the earth get the sun's direct rays throughout the year. For example, in summer, the sun's rays hit that region more directly than any other time of year. So, little explanation, mini science lesson about the axis. The earth orbits the sun. So, it takes us um approximately 365 days (laughs) to orbit the sun and we call this a year. So, the earth not only spins on its axis but the earth as well is orbiting the sun and one complete orbit gives us a year. And then we also have um when the sun comes up, we say it's the sunrise but if you are on the moon, you will see what's called earth rise. So, you will see the earth rise above the horizon. So, if I get up early enough, I can see the sunrise. So, when I get up, it's dark. I didn't get up that early this morning but if you get up early enough, you will see the sunrise. If you were on the moon and you got up early enough, you would see earth rise. Um you can see moonrise as well, I think but again, this isn't a science lesson. <laughs> 